Hello, and welcome back to the Nostalgic Futurist Podcast. This is episode six. Today, I'm going to be talking about fixing Disneyland and, of course, Disney's California Adventure as well. I wanted to kind of go in depth about things that are on the docket to get fixed, but also talking about the things that, when I go to the park, make me a little sad because I'm like, hmm, that used to work better, or this needs paint, or anything like that. So today, we're going to jump into fixing some Disneyland. So today I wanted to start with Indiana Jones because this ride is on the docket to get fixed whenever life goes back to normal because this year it just celebrated its 25th anniversary and it's also my 25th anniversary this year of being alive so we share that. Now the thing is about Indiana Jones that has always kind of like struck me in the wrong way. I mean I absolutely love this ride but it feels a little too much like I'm in a 1990s laser tag the way that they use the glow paint and the way that it's like lots of open rooms with just things like designed on the walls, it makes it feel dated now, whereas it probably felt really cool in 95. I really hope in their refurb of this ride that they're really going to start improving the projections and the lighting. And I really kind of, I'm kind of excited to see if they can maybe put some projections on the walls like they did in Peter Pan's flight to try and bring to life those, I guess, murals that are on the walls that feel kind of like a laser tag, but maybe give them some motion. I also really think that because this ride had so many cool opening day, like effects that got taken out because they didn't work anymore. I think it'd be cool to find some way to replace them or at least take the sound effect out of the track because there used to be this thing where like rubble would fall from the ceiling and it would just be like I think ice that was dropped and they ran into issues with the ice maker and all that but I I really wish that they could find some other gimmicks to throw in there maybe you know not maybe so much references but just cool things that we can do with today's tech to bring this ride like to the level of Rise of the Resistance because it's just as immersive. It's just a different universe. I honestly feel like the Matterhorn is kind of a no-brainer and this needs to be fixed. The problem is this ride is 60 years old. She's an oldie and her track is not the slickest it could be. You know, and the, and the mountain's starting to feel a little dated, and they just redid the queue, which was great. It looks beautiful now. It really brings back the feeling of that Swiss chalet that used to be in Fantasyland for the Skyway Buckets. I just really wish that there, and I know it's not easy, but I just really wish there was a way to just, let's clean up her track, you know, let's, let's give some tender loving care to that mountain, even if it means she's got to be closed for a little while, because she's not going to make it if we don't do something with her now. So there are two parts of Disneyland that I almost never go to unless I'm walking through them. And the first one is Critter Country. The problem with Critter Country is Splash Mountain is a great ride. People love it. It's got a long line. But in the winter, not so much. And that area becomes really dead in the winter. I know there's the Hungry Bear restaurant there, which is a pretty big restaurant, but it's so far in the park that it just doesn't bring the hubbub that you kind of wish the area would have. Also, Winnie the Pooh, the ride, and the character meet and greets don't really attract that many people either. It's so tucked back in the corner that it just doesn't feel inviting. You usually just walk right past it and don't even actually walk fully into that land. I really think that they need to do something to bring people there because Splash Mountain can only do that when it's hot and great. But then all the people are in line for Splash Mountain and Winnie the Pooh is still kind of empty, you know, and I just... I've never really been a big fan of the Winnie the Pooh ride, especially because it got rid of the Country Bear Jamboree, which is like something I wish I had seen when it still existed. And I get it. It was out of date, like totes get it. But the thing is, it's now become a nostalgic thing that many Disneylanders who either saw the Country Bear Jamboree, like my dad, who always talks about blood on the saddle, or, you know, people like me who never got to experience it but have that nostalgia for something they never got to see. I think it'd be great if we could pull something show-esque into that area. Kind of like a Country Bear Jamboree. Maybe it's just like a shout-out to it. Maybe it's, you know, just a little stage show that, like, brings back some of the best parts of that in a smaller scale. 
because the Winnie the Pooh area is just not pulling the amount of people it needs to to help get the weight off the other lands. I don't know if this is because the, you know, it's kind of weird to throw the characters from Song of the South next to Winnie the Pooh because, you know, Song of the South has all its issues with its content and Winnie the Pooh is, you know, for kids. So I feel like there needs to be more work done, whether we're bringing in more characters or just making the land more cohesive and bringing in something that makes that land unique and makes people want to go back there. Okay, gonna admit it. I can't stand Toontown. I can't stand the like super washed out sun bleached buildings that are like, hey, this looks like a cartoon, but it's just not executed in a way that's upkept. I I just can't with it. And I think it's so weird to have like Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Goofy, who are these like classic Disney kids characters next to Roger Rabbit. I love Roger Rabbit, and I'm a much bigger fan of the Roger Rabbit movie than I am about any of the, like, Fab Five, which is sad, I know, for being a Disney person. But I really think that if we're going to go into, like, Toon Town, let's, like, design it well. Let's upkeep it. Let's put some trees so the buildings don't all get, like, faded within 10 seconds. I mean, the land is just falling apart because so much of it was built into, like, a kid's jungle gym. And as time went on, we realized that, you know, having a ball pit for a bunch of kids at a theme park wasn't a good idea. And there's just a bunch of other things that have been closed over time. I, I, you know, I think it's really cool to meet Mickey in his house and meet Minnie in her house and etc. But the houses just feel dated and they don't feel upkept. And it just feels like let's just throw the character in there. So I would love to see them like really lean into cleaning up the cartoonishness and maybe really playing off of the, you know, design of Roger Rabbit And I know that it is, but I just feel like there's more it could be doing because when I watch Roger Rabbit, which is a rather old movie now, it still feels like super active and crazy and like a place I want to go, especially when I go into the queue for the ride. I mean, that ride's queue is amazing because it doesn't fade in the sun and it's got like great references. And I just really feel like the rest of the land needs to feel like that because I'm excited to go into the queue for Roger Rabbit and I am not excited to touch anything else in Toontown. So uh, can we please just paint it at least? Just... I just need it to be cleaner. It just doesn't look like a fun toon town. Okay, these next two are like one, and they both make me kind of sad. There's a lot of restaurants that were, you know, opening day or were put in in a time where Walt had like major design eye watching over them. And I can see what he's going for. The problem is the furnishings, because they're from the 50s and 60s and stuff, they just feel super dated while they're trying to be something from like the turn of the century, which is kind of weird that it feels dated in a modern way as opposed to the way that it's supposed to be. I The Plaza Inn and the Riverbell Terrace, I think is the name of the other one that's in like the edge of Frontierland going into New Orleans Square. I love the idea of the stained glass and the really beautiful chandeliers and the furnishings that kind of feel like the turn of the century. There's just something about them that just feels dated. And I don't know if it's because, you know, those fabrics and stuff were chosen so long ago and we just need to update them maybe to a little bit more of what we think that time period looked like because it is a little different, you know, or update the paint or the colors or not make it a buffet. I hate buffets personally. I find them like really kind of like tacky, which is kind of rude but I I would rather have like kind of like a sit-down restaurant or the restaurants like in um, the Galactic Grill where you go up and you order and you get your food and then you go seat yourself rather than the buffet style which I always just find kind of gross I mean when I was in college I lived in a dorm and you had buffet food and you found things in the food because people are gross so I think that there's just something about the interior and maybe the style of these types of restaurants that needs to change Give it a facelift. Make it not look like those curtains are actually from 1890. Make them look like they're what we think 1890 looked like. My last thing about Disneyland is quick. Can someone just use better projection mapping on Constance Hatchaway in the Haunted Mansion? She looks terrible. She's looked terrible since they put her in. 
please fix her. She's just not, she's not cute with the flat face with the projections, okay? I hope they're doing it in their current refurbishment of Haunted Mansion, and I will be so thankful if they fix her. Hollywood Land in DCA is a dismal place. They've tried over the years to really revamp it. I mean, it was really bad when it first opened with the freaking soap opera restaurant and Superstar Limo. I mean, it was bad. It's better. <laughs> but the problem is, and I kind of agree with this sentiment of like, why do you have a Hollywood land when Hollywood's 30 minutes away? And it's nothing like Hollywood because Hollywood's dirty and disgusting and no one likes to be there. And this is clean and nice. And there's just not much to do there. I mean, you can go see Frozen, but they could just retheme that theater. It doesn't have to be stay as like, you know, the big Hyperion L.A. theater. I mean, you're kind of getting the L.A. Hollywood with the Carthay Circle open area, like the front area of the park. You know, you, you don't really need to have this like kind of hokey, weird. Is it the 30s, 40s Hollywood? Is it modern Hollywood? Not sure. You know, with the sound stages, it's just weird. And, you know, those Marvel characters that are meeting greeting there, they're going to now go into their own land. And Monster Zinc is just kind of randomly there. And Mickey's Magic is randomly there. It's just a hodgepodge. And I've heard a lot of rumors that they're going to tear it out for an expansion of Avengers Campus. And I kind of am like, yeah, go for it. Um, the only thing that's in there that I really, really wish they could, like, relocate or keep is there's that building where they you go in and there's like the animation studio and you can meet Anna and Elsa and there's Turtle Talk with Crush, but it's just this big room in the middle of it that just has huge screens and it shows like concept art with the music of the Disney movies and like actual footage from the Disney movies and it's just so relaxing. A lot of people just go in there to sleep, but I love being in there. It makes me feel like I'm part of the story and it makes me feel like super epic. So if they could find a way to keep that, that'd be great. But otherwise, tear it all down. So not going to lie, I was really excited when they announced Pixar Pier and they were going to finally revamp that part of DCA. They just didn't do a good job. Like, I mean, the Incredibles for the California Screaming Ride was smart, but the execution's weird. Why are there a bunch of baby Jack Jacks on sticks? It's weird. And like, oh, it smells like cookies. Cool. Don't really care. <laughs> you know, Jesse's Critter Carousel, yeah, probably makes a lot more sense than the King Triton Carousel. And, you know, the Midway games are Pixar themed, which is kind of fun. And it, it ties into Toy Story Mania, which is a great ride. And then you have the Inside Out Whirlwind of Emotion Eyesore, which is just a rethemed part of Bugs Land. Which is funny because Bugs Life is Pixar, so you didn't really have to retheme it, you know? I just feel like the land was, like, rushed. I don't feel like they put a lot of time and effort into it. And they were just trying to find a way to make Toy Story Mania make sense. And I, I just really wish they had really taken their time with it like they did with Galaxy's Edge. And thought it out and made it a great land because you've got cars right next to it. Like, Cars Land is great. Cars Land is, like, amazing theming. And then you have Pixar Pier. It, it just, it falls flat. And I, I really wish that they would take some time to really think about it and, like, make it make sense. And not just put Baby Jack Jacks on sticks and call it Pixar Pier. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I think Goofy Sky School was so much better when it was Mulholland Madness. Like, Mulholland is a street in L.A., well, kind of in L.A., and it's known for, like, crazy car accidents because it's, like, super windy and crazy and people drive, like, crazy on it, and it was a funny joke, but I get it. Like, only us Californians really get it. So, like, make it something else, though, because Goofy Sky School is just not cute theming. I, I maybe it's because I just, I'm not a big fan of, like, the Fab Five, but... I find that it just makes the ride kind of hokey and it doesn't make sense. And I was kind of really hoping that when they did make it into Pixar Pier, that it, the pier part would continue into the, the Esplanade area that's like leading back to the Little Mermaid ride. Um, so I thought Goofy Sky School would become a Pixar theme something because that could have been cool. You could have come up with a really cool theming for that. The jellyfish could have become something from like Finding Nemo and the Golden Zephyr could just get torn out. You know, things like that. And then the other part of this is the Silly Symphony Swings, which is now like Mickey Mouse themed. And 
I personally liked the orange better, but a lot of people hated the orange. But the cool thing about the orange is it was a longer ride. The Silly Symphony Swings is now super short. Like, you get up in the air and it's like, oh, go back down. And the music's kind of just contrarian to what's going on in, like, the rest of Pixar Pier. And it's so close to Pixar Pier that I kind of wish that, you know, if they really were going to have a whirlwind of emotion, maybe it should have been the swing ride, you know, and not have put that weird ride in the crook of... Um, and the Incredicoaster. I I just think that the Mickey Mouse and Goofy theming right next to Pixar Pier just, uh, it just feels disjunct. And I feel like they really could have continued that theming all the way back over and just get rid of the Little Mermaid ride because it's terrible. Just, just saying. Thank you for joining me today for some of my ideas on how to fix Disneyland and fix DCA. I'm sure I'll have more of these because I'm constantly thinking of some new Imagineering thoughts. I hope you join me next week and I'll see you then.